So again, look, Alex, some news today. Lamar Jackson, quarterback. According to Robert Kraft at the owners' meetings, he hears from Meek Mill. It, it's it's a game of telephone here. It really is. But a little bit. A little bit. It's relatively concrete news, I guess. Uh, Lamar Jackson told Meek Mill, who told Robert Kraft, that he wants to play quarterback for the New England Patriots. And so uh, this was, at, like I said, at the owners' meetings out in Arizona. Coach Belichick spoke this morning. Robert Kraft spoke this afternoon. Uh, Belichick spoke a little bit on it. Um, he was asked about Lamar Jackson, and he basically said he doesn't talk about anyone who's not on his team. That was sort of his theme. Um, but Robert Kraft brings it up in passing that Meek Mill texted him and said he wants to play for New England. He left it up to Bill Belichick. So um, I know I have my thoughts on where this thing should go and where it could go, but I want to give it up to you first. CLNS Media's Patriots coverage is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So, okay, initial reaction, Mad Libs are awesome, right? This whole thing's a Mad Lib. Read that on the bottom of the screen. That's a Mad Lib. Yep. Um, so I, I had a couple quick thoughts. Yep. First, let's, you know what, let's start with this. Okay. And what, so this wasn't like, Maybe somebody has it recorded and it hasn't come out yet, but right now this is just off tweets. Yep. I would be very interested to hear in what way Robert Kraft said this. Was he joking around? Was he serious? Um, was it lighthearted? Like things like that. I, I'm not saying that that you know people are lying that Robert said it. I, I definitely believe he said it, and I even believe that Meek Mill texted him. I'm just curious how he presented that information. Right. And then, you know, because was he sort of just joking around like, oh, yeah, no, Meek Mill told me that, yeah, sure, it, Lamar wants to come here. And then that leads me to my other question, which is. So this can be interpreted one of two ways, really. Lamar Jackson wants to come play for the Patriots as in he wants to be a Patriot like this is where he wants to be. This is his number one stop. Or is it? Yeah, if the Patriots give him what he wants contractually, then he would play here. Right. Right. You know, it could be one of two. It, it, is it he's he, he's going to tell the Ravens, trade me to the Patriots. That's it. Just where I want to go is going to be like Rogers with the Jets. Or is it going to be, yeah, if they had the highest offer, I'd go there and it's still a bidding war, but he hasn't like totally ruled out the Patriots. Right. right. And we don't know. We don't know. There's no way to know. We'd have to go ask Lamar. We'd have to go ask Meek Mill. But those are my you can't two set that up. reactions. You can't get Meek on the show. I'll try. I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> And then, so I guess the, the the third question, which really sort of goes back to the first point, is how how much does Robert really know? Does right. he just know this? Is there more? Because if you think a couple of steps ahead, let's say this, because not only did he say that Lamar wants to play here, the other big part of this was he said, according to, I think it was Karen Garrigan and Albert Breer were the two people that really put this out there. That's Bill's call, right? Which makes it sound like, in terms from an ownership point of view, which is really the money, he's good with it, right? He if if Bill comes to him and says, "Hey, I want Lamar, and he wants this, you know, high amount of dollars that Robert's going to sign the check," so he's now put Bill in the corner, and he's also put Mac Jones in the corner. I know because he sits here and says. I'd prefer, like, I would take another quarterback. I shouldn't say prefer. He says, I would take another quarterback. And look, you hope Mac Jones understands, and everybody knows how big I am into Mac Jones. Right. And I I, I, I think that and it's going to become this, Mike, and I'll call this right now. And remember I said this. There's going to develop this really stupid narrative that it's Lamar Jack. Like, you're either sticking with Lamar Jack. You're, you're, you're either Team Lamar or Team Mac Jones. You can't be both. Right. There is room to recognize Mac Jones is a young player who has room to grow and could be good and does not need to be shipped off. But at the same time, if you can get a former league MVP, why wouldn't you do that? Right. So you hope Mac Jones understands that. And by the way, we're, we'll get into Bill's comments today. We're going right back to just pushing the kids' buttons as much as possible, <laughs> right where we picked off last year. Right. But – it doesn't have to be one or the other, but it now becomes this thing where if Lamar doesn't come here, Mac knows the owner was okay with replacing him. And now the coach is in this weird spot, weird spotlight where it looks like he essentially turned down Lamar Jackson 
for Mac Jones. And I, I've said this before. I think Bill Belichick's future is tied to Mac Jones right now. Right. But let's, you know, elevate that another step where you don't think if they suck, we're going to get, you know, a, let's say they start one and three. You don't think people are going to start saying, well, you know, Robert made it sound like Bill could have had Lamar and he chose not to. And now they're one and three, right? So Bill's in a tough spot. Mac's in a tough spot. Was Robert, it, maybe he was just joking and we're all taking it way too seriously. That's definitely right. possible. You know, it's it's not like the internet to overreact to a stupid <laughs> little comment, but um, it's it's interesting. It's all very interesting. It is interesting. And, you know, like you said, I guess maybe we could be looking too much into it. And Tamara Brown from Patriots.com did sort of say that it was in passing and it wasn't a direct question. But the things they do in this organization, most of them are calculated, right? And so for Robert Kraft to bring this up unprompted, there's a reason he did that, right? He knows that someone's going to take this story and run with it. And so I just, I do, I find it fascinating that he even had the wherewithal and the, you know, the reasoning behind it to bring it up. Secondly, look, I get, and you're a Mac Jones guy, I'm a Mac Jones guy. I think that Mac Jones can succeed in the NFL as a quarterback. I think, I really do think that with the right pieces around him, he could win a Super Bowl. Bill Belichick's one of the best coaches of all time. You put the right pieces around him with a coach. He has the, you know, the cerebral capability and, you know, people talk about his arm strength. That's just inaccurate. He has a solid arm, all that good stuff. He he can run an offense, and I think he could be a Super Bowl winning quarterback eventually. Having said that, um, the Dolphins just picked up Tua's option. He's not the best quarterback in the division, but he's, he's not bad. The Jets are likely to bring in Aaron Rodgers, and the Bills have Josh Allen. You're the fourth best team in the division right now, even after the improvements you made this offseason. However, you can immediately catapult yourself into the conversation when if you bring in a Lamar Jackson, who literally said, according to Meek Mill, according to Robert Kraft, that he wants to play for you. So it, it, at the end of the day, and I get what you're saying about, you know, was it he wants to play here? This is the only place I want to go. Send me there. Or is it, oh, if they want to pay up, I'd love to play there. That Those are two different things, but they're still right. the same thing in my eyes because if someone's Either way, willing, he's attainable. But so I right. guess. The, the difference is, if you give Lamar an offer, mm -hmm. is he going to take it and say, "Yep, wh where's my where's my locker? What's my jersey number?" Or yeah, although I would think Jawan Bentley probably gives a mate network yeah. idea. But does he say? Does he sign and say, "Where's my locker?" Does he take that offer and go to a handful of other teams and say, "Can you top this?" Right. That's basically what the difference is. That's true. But if I'm the Patriots, I at least explore it. I feel like you absolutely have to explore it now that it's out there that he would right. at least listen. Or like it could be it could, another way to put it. So he told this to Meek Mill. Did he say, I want to play for the Patriots? Or did he say, I want to play for the Patriots, the Dolphins, the, uh, you know, this team, that team, another team, the, the, the Rams, the this, the that, the Niners, right? Because right? those are two completely different things. Right. I just, I look at, you know, I look at how this team's set up now, and you just brought in a second tight end, albeit they're not really blockers. You still need to add that blocking tight end. But, you know, you have two, a double tight system. You have a Bill O'Brien who has worked with a mobile quarterback before. Well, I'll tell you this, Mike, on the tight ends. If if they draft Lamar Jackson, somehow keep one top one, or if they trade for Lamar Jackson, keep one top 100 pick, and that's Darnell Washington. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine? That's your three. Remember when the Rams would, or the Rams, the Ravens would run the Mark Andrews, Hayden Hurst, uh, and they had a third guy in there. I, f I forget. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who it was, but yeah. Nick, 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 but uh, Nick something. Oh, anyway. no. It was um, uh, the guy who also plays defense. Pat Ricard? Yeah. Wasn't it Pat Ricard? Wasn't yeah, he that? played a little bit of fullback. There was somebody else there. Yeah. But uh, Nick Boyle. Nick Boyle was his name. There was a third tight end. But regardless, right? You have three dominant tight ends. You have receivers and Juju, a possession receiver. You have a burner in Tyquan Thornton, maybe mirror a little Hollywood Brown type stuff that they ran in uh, with Greg Roman in Baltimore. I mean, you'd be cooking right off the bat. Uh, you really would be. Bill O'Brien would probably be salivating to call plays and you know design an offense around Lamar Jackson. And again, Belichick is seventy now. Is he really trying to do this? You know rebuild-ish type thing, half, you know, we can compete, but not really. I mean, he said it today. Look at the last 25 years. You can see that we've competed, but this would really, you know, catapult you to like a 
you have to make the playoffs type team in the AFC. Well, I just this- I don't see how you don't explore it. I just there's no reason to not explore it. A, a guy who you know franchise quarterbacks are so hard to find. You have to draft them and then you pay them. They're rarely traded. They're really they're rarely on the market. There is one here that is on the market. If you want to pay him, he'll come. Basically, you have to you have to try and take advantage of it. In my opinion. Well, it, it to, to your point, it goes into something else. Robert Kraft said that I want to talk about. He was asked about how he feels about Bill, and it was kind of like an indirect question about Bill's job security, and he sort of talked around it. Yeah. And he went on for a little bit, like he stretched that answer out. But in the answer, he said, it's very important we make the playoffs this year. Yeah. That to me was telling. Yeah. And I, maybe that was the first Bills heard of that. I, I don't, I doubt it, but doesn't it feel like now Bill's seats getting a little hot? Yeah. And like from a, I know for years it's been fire. Bill has always kind of been the insane crowd. Uh, it's uh, looking a little more that way. You're you're going on four years without a playoff win here. Look, I don't if think they're going to the straight case. up fire Bill Belichick. No, there might no, be some like, sort of shifting, changing of the guards type situation. Right. You you look at. I mean, he he lost control over his own assistants, at least to an extent, this off season. Right. If you're Bill Belichick, you need to make the playoffs this year. You just do. Right. Lamar's going to get you there. And, and people will go, oh, he's only won, you know, one playoff game and he hasn't been good in the postseason. Those are very fair, valid concerns. But he is going to get you there. Right. And right now, that's kind of what the focus needs to be. They can't. I said it before in a different context. They can't afford to have another bridge year. They can't. This is a win now year. It is. For all intents and purposes. Year three of a first round quarterback on a rookie deal. That is supposed to be a win now year. And look, maybe it's not with him, right? Obviously, if they go out and get, I think there's ways they can do it with him, with Mac. Yeah. But you let a guy like Brady walk. Okay, well, you better have a replacement. And the the, the timeline around the league dictates that from when they let Brady go, from when a team moved on to a quarterback to when they got the new quarterback, this is the year that you should really be contenders. And if you don't think you can do it with Mac, you're probably going to have to do it elsewhere. Now, again, I think they can do it with Mac, but they can do it with Lamar, and it's right there for them. It's right there for them, and you know you're giving yourself a better chance. Uh, we've said it, we're back, guys, right? But I mean, right. objectively speaking, Lamar Jackson is a better quarterback than Mac Jones. Like that's not a hot take. That's not something that's. And I, I get you know the money's involved too. It's not apples to apples. There's well, a bunch of different situations, but. If you're looking for your best chance to get back to the postseason, you're going to take Lamar Jackson over Mac Jones. Yeah, this is, uh, it's, what was I going to say? That's a good question. Um, I just totally, what were we saying? I just totally lost my train of thought. Just that, objectively speaking, uh, Lamar Jackson is a better quarterback than Mac Jones. So, like, I know that the contract's involved and that those aren't, you know, it's not really apples to apples. Look. There, there's holes right now, and I, I, you know, me and a lot of people want a wide receiver. Go get Mac Jones, the real number one. There, and, and there's still going to be holes after you do that. And there's going to be holes with Lamar as well. This kind of goes back to that big take I had at the beginning of the winter, Mike. Do you remember this? Why is everybody so focused on finding a quarterback who can fill the holes instead of just filling in the holes for the quarterback you have? And I said, the reason you have that take is because it's so much harder to find the quarterback that'll fill the holes than it is to actually fill them. We have a quarterback who actually can overcome some holes that's available. So if they really don't, like, as ridiculous as this sounds, and people are going to eye roll at me for this, but I'm sorry. If you don't want to pay the price of cost to get Jerry Judy, if you don't want to pay the price of cost to get DeAndre Hopkins, you don't want to pay the price of cost to get Brandon (laughs) Cooks, well, then the only other option is to pay the price of cost to get Lamar Jackson if you want to yep. seriously think about winning. And that's kind of where they're at. And uh, I'll just pull this up in the chat right here. I, I just want to bring up one part of this. I know it's a long comment, but um, people do underrate Lamar as a passer. And people who have followed CLNS for a long, long, long time know I was not super hot on Lamar when he came out of college, specifically because I didn't love him as a passer. And 
when he was in that traditional drop step, Joe Flacco offense as a rookie, you saw it. Right. He has worked so hard at improving as a passer. Like it's night and day yeah. from when it was a rookie. He, he, he's especially last year. I mean, before he got hurt, like whatever he did last offseason, it was just a major, major jump. It's not Tom Brady, like right. going out there and just pinpointing it 50 times a game. But like he is more than a good enough passer. 100%. To play at an MVP caliber with the other stuff he can do. I just, it, it honestly, it caught me by surprise, kind of how just he, it, I think the biggest problem for him, he struggled to um, like replicate his motion. It's like a pitcher or a kicker right. or, or free throws, right? You can't deviate your motion. And when he came out, it was very erratic. Like last year, he just honed that thing in. So, yeah. Um, don't, I, I would just encourage people don't sleep on him as a pass. So you don't need to do that. It's an old narrative. I would agree. Uh, same boat too. You know, when he came out and even early on, it was, it was inconsistent. It was hit or miss. And you saw it in that first postseason, right? Um, his first postseason, the year he won MVP, it was like, they went down against Tennessee and you couldn't really trust him as a strict pocket passer to come back from a ton of points. But that has certainly changed and he has worked on it and he has improved as a passer. And I think he would improve even more as a passer in an off season and, you know, going into a year with a guy like Bill O'Brien, who it, nothing against Greg Roman. He's a solid offensive coordinator, but I'd probably take O'Brien over him. And I think that they would, you know, curate an offense around him just like Roman did. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston and get in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. 